You know, I couldn't sleep last night, so I borrowed your calculator. Not a count sheet? Nope. I calculated that in the 23 years we've been in this house, I've made breakfast in this kitchen 7,544 times. Crikey. No wonder you're looking tired. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hell of a lot of snack, crackle and pop. Yes, and a mountain of boiled eggs, approximately 11,316. Good grief. And I worked out, if I laid all those eggs... It'd be a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, do let me finish. Right. If I laid them all end to end, they'd stretch from here to the Hammersmith flyover. Staggering, isn't it? Mm, if you were the end who laid them, you would be. <laughs> <laughs> are you finished with the table and chairs? All the other rooms are stripped. Oh, yes, of course, Mr Ridge. Uh, but be careful with this drawer, will you? It falls out at the slightest provocation. I think you could leave that with me, madam. I have done this sort of thing before. Oh, I realise that, Mr Ridge. But each piece of furniture has its own little quirk, hasn't it? Has it? Oh, certainly. I mean, our house is positively riddled with quirks. I mean, for example, the chest of drawers in the guest room, it only takes seconds to take the drawers out, but if you don't put them back in the right order, you're juggling around for hours. Squid pup. I beg your, <laughs> beg your pardon? Squid pup, that's how we remember. Squid pup. S-Q-T-P-U-P. -P. In descending order, sheets, quilts, towels, pillowcases and unwanted prezzies. Unwanted what? Prezzies. Prezzies. Things we were given last Christmas, didn't like, and can palm off on somebody else next Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Which reminds me, sharply tick. Maurice, Ronnie, they're ready to help. Oh, by the way, Mr Ridge, I noticed that when you loaded the grandmother clock, you did it in one piece. Now, actually, it is in two pieces. So I wondered, when you come to unload it, there's a little screw yeah, at the uh, back. Madam, uh, madam, 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 the time now is 11.53. Yes. And on Saturdays, as I've already stated, we do not work after 3 o'clock. Yes. The point I'm trying to make is, if you want to talk about your furniture's quirks, you should have hired Arthur Negus. All I do is load and unload it, and if you don't let me get on with it in my highly competent manner, you might not get moved at all. I'm terribly sorry, Mr Ridge. Please carry on. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I nearly forgot these. <laughs> They're at the back of the air in cupboards. Oh, no, <laughs> Terry, we're not taking those old fairy lights to the new house. I can't go through another Christmas of domestic blackouts and your bad temper with buy a new set. Well, there's nothing wrong with this lot. Darling, if Edison had used those to demonstrate electricity, we'd still be using candles. <laughs> How unsentimental can you get? I mean, if they, if they didn't fuse the house and give me the occasional shock, it, it wouldn't seem like Christmas. <laughs> this is a chance to get rid of all our old junk. Start a new life. There was nothing wrong with the old one. No, I, I know that, darling, but it's over now. It's past. 7,000 breakfasts. Yeah, I know. Three miles of boiled eggs. Yes. <laughs> Twenty-three happy years. It's ancient history, Terry. It's over and done with. You don't mean that. I do. No, you do not. You're being ruthless with yourself, because you realise if you weaken for one second, the floodgates will open and... <sighs> and you'll dissolve in a, in a welt of tears. <laughs> don't worry, Jude. I'll be brave enough for both of us. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, yes, Mr Ridge. Oh, oh, yes. It's all packed now, so we ought to be pushing off pretty smartish. Yes, of course. There's just that one last box. I'll get it. And do be careful, Mr Ridge. It really doesn't... Ma uh, madam, I have been doing this sort of thing for over 20 years. Ah, yes, but that box... ...is safe in my hands. <laughs> was going to say, has a weak bottom. <laughs> but you know that now, don't you? Terry! <laughs> Darling, they're about ready to go. The room seems smaller without the furniture. Yes. I I'd have expected it to be the other way round. Yes. 23 years, we've... 23 happy years. Oh, oh I, I, I didn't mean to upset you, June. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't keep harping on it. I know how emotionally taxing it must be for you. Uh, June, sorry, please. No. I'm sorry. Don't bottle it up. I'm not bottling anything up. How can you say that? Handkerchief's absolutely soaking. Oh, darling, it's the mopping up cloth. 
<laughs> One of the men must have put a cup down. It's left a ring. What, what are you doing? We don't live here anymore. I'm not having the people who move in say we left a slum behind. You, one, one cup ring hardly constitutes a slum. Oh, did you check the garden shed? No, but I'm nip out now with a dust and a tin of floor polish. <laughs> well, you just do what you have to do and don't forget to turn off the electricity. Anyone would think she didn't care. Goodbye, old house. I hope you like the new people. Sorry, sir, did you say something? New people. New P. Uh, ten new P. Uh, ten new P. That, that is what the, uh, the uh, meter takes under the car. Stairs, oh. ten new P. Uh, we ought to be getting a move on, sir. It's after twelve. Yes, of course. Uh, let me give me no, a hand. No, I can manage. No, it's no trouble. That's all right. no, I can do it. That's got a weak bottom, right? So your wife was telling me. Yes, if you need any more help, give me a shout and I'll be willing to give you a hand. A June! All right, darling, I'm ready when you are. Well, why don't you nip out and get in the car and I'll put that mopping up cloth back in the kitchen. This time, it is my handkerchief. Oh, sweetheart. <laughs> she cares. She cares. <laughs> Don't look round. Remember what happened to Lot's wife. <laughs> Are you ready, Mr Ridge? We have been ready for the last half hour, sir. Good. Well done. Right. We shall be travelling in convoy to Croydon. My wife and I will be in the lead car, and you, of course, will be in the van. Oh, that's where I'll be. I'm glad you told me. Finally off, are you? Yes, Joan, this is it. Oh, we will miss you. Sorry Freddy couldn't be here, but he sends love and kisses to you both. You will come and visit us, won't you? Pearlie isn't far away. It is 17 miles through heavy traffic. And as it is now getting on for 20 past 12, we ought to be getting our skates on. There's no need to panic, Mr Ridge. My wife will be driving, so I can keep an eye on you in case you go wrong. Oh, I'll tell the lads. I'm sure they'll find it a great comfort. I know I may look a fool, but we had this left over from the Jubilee. I wanted to give you a good send-off. Oh, what a sweet thought. You mean you didn't hire a brass band to go with it? What a letdown. Oh, Terry, you wag. No, you wag. <laughs> Switch your headlights on, darling. What for? Well, we're travelling in convoy, trucking through Croydon. We don't want trouble with the bears, do we? <laughs> In Croydon? Hmm. OK, let's move them out! Bye! Good luck! Mummy! Wendy! <laughs> <laughs> Darling, what's happened? I banged my nose! <laughs> Wendy! What the hell do you mean by jamming your brakes on like that? Stopping. Isn't that what usually happens when you jam on your brakes? I tried phoning, but I couldn't get through. No, we had it disconnected yesterday. Hello, Wendy. Come to see your mum and dad off. I know I look a fool with this flag, but we had it left over from the jewelry. But Wendy, are you all right? Oh, Daddy. I think we'd better go back inside. Here. Yeah. You're not going back in the house, are you? Just for a moment. But we're ready to go. The furniture's packed and everything. Good point, Mr. Ridge. Bring a chair, will you? <laughs> you? In here, darling. What's all this, sir? Wendy's left Roger. Oh. Do you want us to go and collect him? <laughs> <laughs> She's left him for good. Oh, Wendy. There's nothing to be gained by running away. This is a very serious step to take, Wendy. Drastic, even. He's been unfaithful. You did the right thing! The <laughs> I suppose it's not his fault. He's always been easily led. And I've been neglecting him terribly. Ne neglecting is too good for him. What he wants is a good horse whipping with a real horse. <laughs> One chair. Thank you. And at the third stroke, it will be 12.23 precisely. Peep, peep, peep. <laughs> Who was that? Peeping Tom. <laughs> Darling, sit down and tell us all about uh, it. June, June, she may not want to talk about oh, it. Oh, I do, Daddy. But, all right, Wendy, but, but don't say that because you think we'll be upset if you don't. But if, if it will help, then talk about it. If it won't, then don't. 
I mean, you understand, Wendy? If you're absolutely sure... Terry, for heaven's sake, shut up and let her talk about it. Now don't be bullied by your mother. Terry! All right. Go on, darling. We're listening. Well, Roger has this secretary called Marjorie. I'll kill him! I'll kill him! I'll kill him! Terry, will you be quiet? Sorry, sorry. I've been working late at the agency nearly every night for the last six weeks, and naturally Roger isn't too happy about it. Although it was his idea that I should do the extra work in the first place. Well, you know why he suggested that. Why? <laughs> so that he could carry on this affair with his secretary. Well, not necessarily. I mean, the man's lonely, so he takes his secretary out for a drink and one thing leads to another. I mean, it happens to the most faithful of husbands. Oh? <laughs> How do you know? Because, uh, because I... <laughs> because I have seen it happen to many of my colleagues. But in the end, they always trot back to the long-suffering wife, so there, there is nothing to get worked up about. Except in this case, the long-suffering wife happens to be your daughter. I'll tear him limb from limb! But things really got out of hand last night. What happened? He didn't get in till three in the morning. And then tried to insult my intelligence by saying his car had broken down miles from a telephone? Well, it is just possible, darling. Mummy, he reeked of perfume. He doesn't wear perfume, does he? <laughs> well, Ikey, Wendy, you are in trouble. Not, <laughs> not his perfume, Dad. It was Marjorie's. She was in the car with him. He admitted it. So first thing this morning, I threw some things in a case and drove straight here. I'm very glad you did, darling. Terry? You can drive Wendy's car, and she can travel with me. But I've got to keep an eye on the van. <laughs> well, you can keep an eye on it from behind. Well, how can I keep an eye on it from behind? I mean, it's so big, I, I won't know we haven't got to where we're going until we get there and find out it isn't where we should have got to. <laughs> well, you can keep an eye behind, and Wendy can keep an eye in front. Is that all right? Is she making sense? About as much sense as you are. Oh, good. <laughs> Come on. It's time we left this old house. 23 years we've been here, Wendy. Twenty-three happy years. Quick, before the waterworks start again. The new people will be complaining of the damp. <laughs> Don't forget the chair! Oh, yeah. Crikey. It looks like the poor man's mastermind. <laughs> Off at last, are you? Yes, this is it. I'll go and get my flag, then. <laughs> Mr. Ridge, there's been a slight change of plan. Really? Yes. Originally, I was going to be in the lead car to keep an eye on you, but now my daughter will be fulfilling that function and I'll be bringing up your rear. I do not care what you bring up, just so long as we get a move on. These men do not work after three o'clock. Why? Do you pull their plugs out? <laughs> do you want your copy of our union rules? Let's not waste any more time, Mr. Ridge. Please. Here I come with my little flag, Timmy. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Give me strength. Mummy! I'm not speaking to him. Wendy! I'm not speaking to you, Roger. I love you! Huh. What? She said, huh. And I'm not speaking to you either. You, you buffoon, why didn't you see me? You made me bang my nose. Never mind your bloody nose. I can bang my nose the second time. Terry, look, I've had you and your move right up to here. And I've had you right up to here, too. Terry. And I'm not too fond of you, either. I can't get Wendy to listen to me. Do you wonder, Roger, after what you've done to her? Why, what has he done? Well, he's gone and... Get <laughs> <of> your business. <laughs> Hello, Roger. Uh, come to see the moth, have you? Uh, yes. I know I look a fool with this flag. Uh, no, you I... don't, Joan. It was left over from the Jubilee, and it's a lovely thought. But I feel embarrassed. Well, you shouldn't. But I keep waving it, and you don't go. Well, it's not for the one to try. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the gas works. Uh, you don't notice it after you've lived here. <laughs> Roger. Let's have it out. Now, you understand that our thing is that two men can talk about it in an open and frank sort of way that is impossible between members of the opposite sex. Not sure I follow you, Terry. Well, uh, for example, if you were a woman and I was a man, I would never... But you are a man. 
Yes, I know that, but... And if I was a woman, you wouldn't let me marry your daughter in the first place. No, don't try and be clever with me, Roger. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll alienate my sympathies. Now, I... I... I know what it is to be young and tempted. You must have a marvellous memory. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, I have, and shut your mouth. Uh, face, please. No, I... I know in my early days on the road as a salesman, there was always at least one unattached female dining alone in these little hotels I used to stay at. Sometimes even more than one. I remember on one occasion in Carlisle, there were these two sisters on a hiking holiday. Americans. Americans, eh? <laughs> yeah, big girls they were. <laughs> what happened? Well, well, one of them, she... she... What do you mean, what happened? <laughs> we are not discussing my indiscretions. Not, not that I've had any. Now, the question is, Roger, have you and... Uh, what's her name? Marjorie. Have you and she... Do you know? What? <laughs> well, have you... <laughs> <laughs> have you been, to put it discreetly... <laughs> no. W would you care to elaborate on that? No. But you haven't... <laughs> no. You do mean no? Yes. You changed your mind? <laughs> no, I mean, no, I haven't. I haven't... There's no need to be vulgar, Roger. <laughs> I'm sorry, Terry. I know you're only trying to help, but believe me, there's nothing wrong between me and Wendy that a week together alone in the sun couldn't have cure. Right, and you're gonna get it. What? Well, we made a, quite a nice little profit on the sale of this house, so take 200 of it and push off the pair of you. I'm not taking money from you, Terry. I can support my family perfectly happily, thank you. It is anything but perfect. You certainly aren't happy. And I won't have any family at all if you two split up, so take the money for my grandchildren's sake. What grandchildren? Well, the grandchildren I won't get if you two split up. <laughs> In here. You... Roger, go away. That's just what I've been telling you. June, now look... I don't want to listen to you. I don't want to look at you. I don't even want to know you exist. In fact, Roger, you do not exist. Do you understand as far as I am concerned, you do not exist? She's quite pleased to see you, actually. <laughs> I am not. Look, look, love. Look, Roger has given me his word that there is absolutely nothing at all between him and... What's her name? Marjorie. Uh, Marjorie. I mean, he hasn't... Mm, or even considered it. Just ask him who drove him here this morning. Who drove you here this morning? I can explain that. Well, just tell Terry whose car it was and who was at the wheel. Uh, well, actually, it was, um... What's her name? Marjorie? Marjorie. And you still say there's nothing between you? I do. Are you prepared to swear that on the Bible? Yes. Terry? What? Fetch a Bible. Certainly. <laughs> but where am I going to get a Bible from? There's one in the van. I'm not unpacking that van looking for a Bible. They'll think I'm a religious maniac. How could you bring that woman here, Roger? I didn't bring her. She brought me. You took the car, remember? Might I have a word? No! no. I have told you repeatedly, Wendy, Marjorie's husband... You has... mean she's married? Yes. He's one of my best friends. Roger, you are carrying on with the wife of your best friend? You cad. <laughs> he is doing a training course in Germany and he asked me to look after her while he was away. He may have asked you to look, but he certainly didn't ask you to touch. I have taken her to the cinema once <sighs> and the theatre twice <sighs> in the space of a month. Well, it's hardly what you call a torrid romance, is it? And which was it last night? The theatre, the cinema, or what? As a matter of fact, we were at a school hall in Harpenden. Uh, Marjorie, I really don't think you ought to be here. I don't think any of us ought to be here. Can I draw your attention to the time? <laughs> Thank you for reminding me, Mr Ridge. Roger, you didn't get home until three o'clock in the morning. Not even school halls in Harpenden stay open that late. Roger drove me to see some friends in an amateur production of South Pacific, and, and on the way home now, we were... there's a coincidence. What is? But we did that show a couple of years ago. <laughs> June was marvellous as Bloody Mary. Yeah, I saw that at the town hall, was it? That's right. <laughs> you were Bloody Mary, were you? <laughs> yes, she was. Yeah, she backed out her teeth and put a bone through her hair. <laughs> <laughs> you were terrific. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I... I was in it, actually. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I, 
I played the comedy lead, you know, I, I, I was the I, I was the chap who had the ship tattooed on his on his stomach. Oh, I can't say I remember that. Oh, oh. but you must do. A hundred and one pounds of fun. <laughs> That's when you know honey bun. Daddy, please. It stopped the show. I wore a grass skirt and had a couple of coconut shells tied to me chest. <laughs> We are not discussing your past triumphs at the Operatic Society. What triumphs? You can't even remember me. <laughs> now, Roger. Yeah, Roger. Where's Roger? Now, Roger, you didn't get home until three o'clock in the morning. Why? We broke down on the M1 and, as usual, none of the emergency telephones were working. Oh, and I can vouch for that. You weren't with him, were you? No. <laughs> I'm talking about the phones. We were doing this move from Guildford and we got three miles past Newport, Pagnell. You were smothered in perfume. I was not. <laughs> Not you, him. Look, Roger got oil on his hands. I put eau de cologne on a handkerchief to clean them. Well, it sounds reasonable to me. You're not being much help, you know. <laughs> Look, here's the receipt from the garage who eventually turned out for us. Well, the phone number's on the top. Why don't you check? Roger, I shall be in the car in case your family still aren't convinced and you want a lift home. Goodbye. Well, there you are, then, irrefutable proof. Now, if I was asked to deliver a verdict, I would have to say, not guilty, my lord. Mr Ridge? Hmm? Do you think you could possibly wait outside? Yes, yes, I think I possibly could manage to wait outside. After all, I've been doing nothing else for the past half hour, have I? But I warn you now, resolve your domestic crisis to sweet, or you won't be going anywhere today. Terry, he can't talk to us like that, can he? We're his employers. No. Well, uh, Ridge, come back here. Are you talking to me? If I am looking at you and speaking in your direction, it is a reasonable assumption, don't you think? <laughs> now, look here. Now, you listen to me. No, you look here. We are moving house. You are hired to assist us. You receive money on condition you do the job to the satisfaction to the people who have hired you. We are the people who have hired you. We are not satisfied. Do I make myself clear? In other words... In other words, button your lip and wait outside. <laughs> oh, right. Well done, Daddy. Don't you think you were just a touch too strong, Terry? Oh, for heaven's sake, don't be so wet, Roger. If you'd have been as firm with me, none of this would have blown up in the first place. Why didn't you tell me about the receipt? Because I didn't think to ask for one. Marjorie did, because she's that kind of secretary. You see, Mummy, he needs a wet nurse for everything. Oh, calm down, Wendy. I think we all owe Roger an apology. I'm not going to apologise. He admits he's been going out with her. Now, wait a minute, younger. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't unload your guilt about working in the evenings by dumping it on Roger. That's nonsense, Daddy. Mm -hmm. no. Excuse me. Certainly. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. We, we... Have... Your mother and I have had the same trouble in our marriage, didn't we, dear? Terry? Now, in the early days, when I was working late every night, I, mean, I felt a certain amount of guilt about it. Neglect her. So I tried to pick a quarrel at every publication. Did I not, dear? Darling! Thank you very much. Yes, I did. <laughs> I did. I tried. I tried to put her in the wrong. I even did what you've done. I even accused her of having an affair with a next door neighbour. Oh, but of course, there was, there was absolutely nothing between them. <laughs> Darling, hmm? there's something you must know. You mean. <laughs> You mean there was something? <laughs> no, of course not, Terry. Hmm? They're unloading the van. Y what? <laughs> oh. Hell's teeth. Bridge, what is this? It's your coffee table, sir. Don't you recognise it? Must I make my position clear to you again? Your position is crystal clear, sir. You are in a hell of a mess. It is now 11 minutes past one, and there is no way, short of entering hyperspace, that we're going to get through that Saturday afternoon traffic to Croydon and unloaded by three. And as you know, sir, we, we do, do not... not work after three o'clock. I know. But don't bring that sofa in here. Sure, but, yeah, that's... Look, can't you make allowances, Mr. It's just this one. I am sorry, sir, but your attitude throughout has <laughs> been like the Tsar of Russia on the eve of the resolution. Now, look here, Rasputin. <laughs> you are moving house. We have been hired to assist you. We do not assist you after three o'clock on a Saturday. This is Saturday. You are not moving house. Do I make myself clear? <laughs> Communist agitator! What are we going to do? Let me have a word with them. Oh, don't waste your time, Roger. If Daddy can't get them to do it, what chance have you got? Wendy? What? Shut up! Oh! <laughs> well done. <laughs> <laughs> you asked for that, you know, darling. I know, Mummy. 
And you're right too, Daddy. I do feel guilty. If only he'd tell me to, to give up the job, I'd do it gladly. But he's so reticent. From where I'm standing, he looks about as reticent as Muhammad Ali. Oh. Oh. Oh, well done, that man. Oh, pity it's a waste of time. Poor Roger. He tries to be forceful occasionally, but his heart just isn't in it. Well, forcefulness isn't everything, you know, darling. Sometimes it's just another word for pig-headedness. I mean, look at your father. Sure. <laughs> Jew, single-minded I may be, forceful too, I'll admit, but nobody ever could accuse me of being pig-headed. I wouldn't dream of it, sir. Uh, take the sofa first. Oh, you've come to your senses, have you, Ridge? <laughs> Don't start. We would not have relented had it not been for the eloquence of your son-in-law. He's far better than this family deserves. Oh, Roger, you're marvellous. Thank you, dear. Uh, Roger, do me one more favour, will you? What? Tell her to give up her job. Give up your job? Oh, darling, I'm so glad you said that. Does that mean I can tell Marjorie I won't need a lift home? No, let me do it and I'll apologise at the same time. Oh, Mummy, why am I such an idiot sometimes? You take after your father, <laughs> darling. <laughs> what? Don't be a minute. No, you'd better not be. We shall be departing from here in precisely three minutes, with or without the rest of you, and I mean that. Roger, how did you get him to change his mind? Well, in the first place, I said, please. Terry, why didn't you think of that? And then I offered them a cash bonus of £200. <laughs> You're mad. Where are you going to get £200 from? From you. <laughs> what? You were offered us a holiday to bring us together. Well, now we won't need it. I wouldn't give that lot 200 pence. Terry. Look, June, it is a matter of principle. I will not repeat that. <laughs> no matter what pressures are brought to bear on me, I will not. I will not. I will. <laughs> will you take a check? I won't take no for an answer, Terry. We're going to help you unload. He's been forceful again, Wendy. Are you going this time? Yes. You're sure? Yes. yes. <laughs> ah, Mr Ridge, the plan will be very much as before. Not the original plan, you understand, but something similar. I shall be in the lead car. Oh, let's just get on with it, shall we, before I take a rope out of the back and hang myself. Extraordinary behaviour. <laughs> on, June. Yes, I am switching on. Well, nothing's happening. Yes, I know. The battery must be flat. Off at last, eh? Are you? Well, no wonder you left the headlights on. Are you off the... You switched the headlights on. You should have switched them off. You're not off, are you? <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? Why aren't you moving? Do you hear me? What has gone wrong this time? Mr. Ridge, you know that rope you're going to hang yourself with? Yes, what about it? Could you give us a toe? 